Hello there, assets! This is Sir Mangiat and welcome to my channel. What are the equations or formula that you have learned since junior high school? Are they complicated or are they so simple that you can recite it with your eyes closed? Paano kung sabihin kong, in basic accounting, we will use a very simple formula for the rest of our lessons? Are you ready? Let's begin! Maybe you are asking, ano ba ang ginagawa sa accounting? Nagbibilang ng pera? Nagsosob ng math problems? There is a wrong perception about accounting or accountancy. Sabi nila, kung kukuha ka daw ng course or program na accountancy sa college, kailangan sobrang galing mo daw sa math. This is not actually a requirement in accounting. Yes, there are mathematical concepts and operations. However, it mainly requires your analytical skills in solving accounting problems. We will just use basic mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For you to clearly visualize and experience accounting, let's take a look at this equation. The accounting equation. We're in... A is equal to L plus E, wherein A stands for assets, L stands for liabilities, and E stands for equity. The total liabilities and equity must be equal or should I say be balanced with the assets. Sa equation ito, iikot lahat ng gagawin natin sa accounting. So let's identify all these three components starting with the assets. Assets are defined as resources controlled by the entity as a result of past transactions or events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. So what is your keyword here? It is the word resources. So, lahat ng bagay that you put into the business that you will use in its operations magmula sa cash, mga properties like land, building, and vehicles, supplies, inventories, even your mga pautang or receivables. These are your assets. By using these assets, you are expecting that you will economically benefit or sa madaling salita, kikita ka. So we can categorize assets into tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets are assets like cash, stocks, machinery, equipment, furniture, and land. On the other hand, example of intangible assets are the intellectual property rights like trademarks and patent rights. Ito yung karapatan mo o lisensya mo to produce a product and sell a specific product na originally nagmula sa sarili mong invention at pagkamalikhain. The brand name and logo of your product can also be your assets. We can also classify assets into current and non-current assets. Current assets are those assets that are subject to use in a period of one year, such as cash, while non-current assets are assets that can be used beyond one year, like land. The second one are the liabilities. Liabilities are present obligations of the entity arising from past transactions or events, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits. What is their keyword? That is obligations. Meaning, 
may tungkulin o responsibilidad ka sa ibang tao o ibang business entities that you need to settle. Sa madaling salita, may pagkakautang ka. They are the entities payable to its service, good, or resource providers. May mga dapat kang bayaran kay suppliers, kay banks, sa government, and to other businesses. Some of these are taxes o buwis, which should be paid to the government. Mga utang ng business to other suppliers, such as accounts payable or note payable. And also, utilities payable o yung bayad sa kuryente, tubig at telecommunication. Liabilities can also be current or non-current liabilities. Current liabilities may include accounts payable and tax payables which must be settled within a year, while non-current liabilities are to be settled beyond one year. Lastly is the equity. Equity is the residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting all of its liabilities. It is also called capital or owner's equity. It is the resulting amount when the total liabilities are subtracted from the total assets. Some of the important accounts here are capital, withdrawals, and income summary. For the income summary, revenues or income and expenses are summarized to get the profit or loss. If the total revenue is greater than expenses, there is profit. If the total expenses is greater than the total revenue, there is loss. Now, let's take a look at the following transactions. How will you show that there is a balance between assets and liabilities and equity when assets are invested by the owner? For the rest of the transactions, we will use these accounts in this table. For example, on July 1, Paolo Reyes started a delivery service on July 1, 2019. The following transactions occurred during the month of July. He invested 800,000 pesos cash and cars amounting to 200,000 pesos. First, you write the date, which is July 1. Cash and cars are resources of the business. That's why they are considered assets. So this is the cash, this is the cars. As initial investment, the cash and cars are also considered as capital of the business. That's why we write 1 million pesos under equity. Nagbalance ba? Yes. 800,000 plus 200,000 is 1 million pesos of assets and 1 million for the equity. There is zero liability since there is no obligation to be paid. Second transaction wherein there are borrowings from the bank. On July 2, Reyes borrowed 100,000 pesos cash from PNB for her use in his business. As you can see, our previous recording is still there. Now we shall solve the next one. Cash is borrowed. Meaning, ang business ay umutang o humiram ng pera sa bangko. There is cash received, so write the amount under cash. Since it is borrowed, the business has now its liability. So write the amount under loans payable. On the other hand, the equity is not affected. Now, is it balanced? Yes, it is. What if asset is purchased for cash? Here is the transaction. On July 7, bought tables and chairs from Orocon and paid 45,000 pesos cash. So write the date of transaction again, which is July 7. Let us analyze. The business bought tables and chairs. These two are considered as furniture. How much is the value of this furniture? It is 45,000 pesos. So write 45,000 pesos under furniture. Anong account ang affected? It is cash since it is paid for cash. Since there is cash payment, 45,000 pesos will be deducted from cash. 
as you can see, it is enclosed by parentheses. In accounting, deductions or negative values are written like this. There is no liability and equity affected. Now, the question, again, is it balanced? Yes. 45,000 minus 45,000 is zero assets. Zero from liabilities and zero from equity is zero. Next is when assets are purchased on account. Example, on July 15, various equipment were purchased on account from Fortune for 55,000 pesos. Meaning, bumili ng mga kagamitan pero utang pa o hindi pa nababayaran. The recording will be 55,000 under equipment and 55,000 under accounts payable. Equipment is an asset and accounts payable is a liability. So 55,000 assets is equal to 55,000 from the other side. How about withdrawals? Income and expenses. They affect the equity. Income increases the owner's equity while withdrawals and expenses decreases the amount of owner's equity. Now, for the rest of the transactions related to this, you may refer to your learning modules given to you and study how they are recorded. After all the transactions are recorded properly, get the ending balance of each account. For cash, it is 807,000. For accounts receivable, it is 18,000. For cars, it is 200,000. For furniture, it is 45,000. For equipment, 55,000. For accounts payable, that is zero. For loans payable, that is 100,000. For Reyes Capital, that is 1,115,000. Then get the total of all the asset accounts. The amount is 1,125,000. Also, compute for the total amount of liabilities and equity. The answer is the same as assets, which is 1,125,000 pesos. Are they balanced? Yes. Now, this is the accounting equation. A is equal to L plus E. I hope that you learned something new today. If you learned from this video, I encourage you to like and subscribe to this channel and share the learnings you have acquired today. This is Sir Jomari Mangiat saying, In a life full of liabilities, always remember to become an asset. If you don't want to be an asset, don't try to be everyone's liability.